The Uzumaki and the Senju clans are cousins. Maybe distant, but they are related. Beyond that, Hashirama Senju's wife was herself an Uzumaki. That technically makes Tsunade one quarter Uzumaki, which is a fun fact for all of you. Her heritage with both clans explains why she has so much extra chakra to throw around. There is one thing that goes mostly unexplained though, a particular Kekai Genkai that Hashirama uses. Something only Hashirama uses. It has been displayed by Ashura Otsutsu Suki and even utilized by Yamato and Danzo, but these among others only because they have Hashirama Senju's cells, and the Zetsu as well. But that being said, they're cultivated out of Hashirama's cells and the Ghetto statue. This I find strange though. Besides Ashura, Hashirama is the only natural user of wood release. Well, Moegi can utilize the style in Boruto, and how she can do it, why she can do it, and why it's not a big freaking deal to the other characters is a total mystery, but as it stands with the possible exception of Moegi, nobody outside of Hashirama and Ashura can use it. But why? Not even any of the other Senju can use it. Not even Tsunade, and she's a direct descendant of Hashirama. So what's so special about this? Why can nobody, even within the Senju, use it? Well, I have a particular theory. What if only Ashura reincarnations can naturally do it? After all, it's only been naturally displayed by them. Perhaps only Ashura reincarnates can utilize wood release, but if so, then why couldn't Naruto? That's actually a unique question, and I'm a little confused about it because during the Boruto series, he possesses an arm completely fashioned out of Hashirama Senju's cells, so he logically should be able to. So let's stop for a moment and see what the world would be like if Naruto could use wood release. Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, we just released some brand new merch. If you'd like to show your support for the channel even further while at the same time wrapping stylish clothing, be sure to check that out as well. The store is linked below. YouTube's been unsubscribing users from channels lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Amagi. And with that out of the way, Let's get into the video. On the day of Naruto's birth, the Ninetales was taken from Kushina. This was in an effort to claim it by Obito Uchiha, who had hoped to use it to complete the Eye of the Moon plan. He knew that she was pregnant, and it was known that during pregnancy, when in labor, the mother needed to divert all extra chakra to childbirth, which left the seal weakened just long enough to allow the tailed beast to escape. This was a golden opportunity for Obito to take the strongest, most powerful tailed beast for himself. And that's just what he did. Seizing the opportunity through leverage, he managed to fool the fourth Okage and take her for himself, chaining her up and removing the nine tails. Placing it under his genjutsu, he began to command it to tear everything to pieces. The villagers screamed in terror as the massive fox swept through their village like an angry nature god that had been imprisoned for far too long. This was knocking out two birds with one stone, taking the beast for himself and destroying the village that had killed his beloved Rin. She had died in defense of this village, and it was this village that demanded such things of the people within. The love he once held for it, the pure, unabating patriotic love of his village, of his people. The entirety of his affections had reversed polarity the moment Rin had died, and that was Madara's secret plan. Even in death, he played the puppet master, and Obito was his unknowing yet willing pawn. But the fourth Okage, his mentor, Minato Namakaze, would not have that. He would confront Obito, whose identity was yet to be known. Obito would laugh at the concept. Minato was fast, but Obito's sorrow and hatred allowed him to see the world through a new eye. The Kamui. At any point in time, Obito could just decide to not take damage, his form becoming as shallow as his love for the world had ever been. Out of his desire for a perfect world, his Mangekyo heeded the call and gave him access to the Kamui dimension, a world where he could never be hurt again. He was hardly the man he had once been a hollow shell as thin as air. This was the irony of his ability. It mirrored him as a person, who he had become at the deepest part of himself. A boy hiding in a fantasy world to escape the world that had wounded him so badly. And now, the ghost of that boy was here to teach the world the same pain he felt, and then offered those within it a chance to escape with him to a world where they could be happy. The ends justified the means. Obito, in his heart, had deceived himself as much as he deceived others, living in a perpetual illusion. And the fourth's Sengon to his back served as a wake-up call. You're not invincible. Even in the world where you hide, I can find you. And that was meant to be less of a threat and more of a comfort, a prophecy, an acknowledgement of the future in which his son Naruto would do the same. But this time, instead of using a Rasengan, it would be the open arms of a hug and a heart of pure understanding and love. I will find you, the real you. 
a promise Obito had yet to understand, one yet to be fulfilled. But with that, the contract was broken and Obito fled the village to tend to his wounds as Minato proceeded to deal with the threat of the nine-tailed fox. Kurama, in his rage, smashed through the village, attempting to destroy everything. They had used and abused him for the last time. No more. They would have the chance to do this no more. Judgment Day had come for them on October 10th, and as Naruto took his first breaths, the village was taking its last. That was until the yellow flash of the leaf, like a shining beacon of hope in the night, appeared and tore the fox away from the village, beyond the mountains to defeat it. There, it had been decided to seal it away. Now, actually, I want to add another element to this what if. I want to consider what happens should Naruto have wood release and wood release only as his special power. I plan to take away the Ninetales from him, and in doing so, free his path to follow something new and special. In accordance with this line of thought, let's say for a moment that Minato was too weak and so helplessly believed he could save his wife. And for this moment only, let's believe that Kushina knew her limits enough that it were true, and that she would still die even if she resealed the Ninetales into herself. So at this point, Kushina is too weak to do anything, and Minato would utilize the Reaper Death Seal to pull Karama back inside of Kushina. And upon Minato's death, Kushina would would take her final breaths, Kurama donating Chakra as fast as he can to save her life and in turn his own, but failing miserably, falling into death's cold embrace along with his Jinchuriki. His Chakra, consciousness, and everything else spread across the winds and the land, beginning its attempt to reconstitute over the course of an undisclosed amount of years. Naruto would be left alive only, his parents' corpses laying nearby, a travesty that should never be experienced and something that the third Hokage wished he didn't have to see. Taking the babe up in his arms, he he promised to protect Naruto. To that end, he used Kushina's surname Uzumaki to hide Naruto from Minato's enemies, and would put the child up in an apartment. Now the people weren't mean to Naruto at all. In fact, given that he did not possess the nine tails in this world, he would receive even sympathy from the people. A child, alone, no one to protect or guide it. Due to there being no hatred toward him, the people would find within their hearts charity, seeing him as just another victim of the nine tails. His life would be easier. He would be given gifts by the people of the village, which generally consisted of small toys or something to eat. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and that was what was happening here, something every Naruto deserved. He would slowly get new friends at the playgrounds, and the kids' parents no longer pulled their children away from him as he wasn't the beast they feared. Was he lonely? Well, yeah, but he wasn't quite as sad. He even found companionship in a small potted plant he called Ukikun, the first plant he ever created with his Kekai Genkai. To a point, Naruto was a happy child, smiling often, and he rarely caused issues for the village. His vandalist nature was not quite so present due to him receiving the positive attention his mainline counterpart lacked. Now, you may ask yourself, does this still result in Naruto wanting to become Hokage? Well, if you recall, Naruto's entire dream was based solely upon acceptance of the village. He believed that if they refused to accept and respect him as a person, then maybe they would if he were Hokage. This was his logic when forming his dream. Now, this Naruto has no need for that, but at the exact same time, I think Naruto would still want to be Hokage. Not for acceptance, but out of gratitude. Attitude. He would want to lead his village because his village loved him. Think about how Naruto wanted to become Hokage even after the village accepted him and loved him post Pain's assault. A similar concept here. Naruto wants to lead the village that loves him because he loves them. To that end, he joins the academy where he would study as always. He would struggle while in school, his studies below average, but that can only be expected when you assume a child is going to figure everything out on their own. He also seems to have an issue with the whole clone transformation jutsu just as he always had, but he does seem capable of creating a wood clone. This technique is not exactly what was asked of him, but at the same time, the jutsu he performed was of a similar function and was tangible as well, which made all the difference. He could grow and learn further, and surely he would get it. He would graduate due to his use of wood clone on the grounds that he instead studied the clone transformation technique and perfect it, as it would be helpful as well and cost far less chakra. Naruto would agree to that and just be pleased to finally receive the headband with the protective plate bearing Konoha's symbol. He would be assigned to a team, but to his delight and horror, the team consists of Sakura and Sasuke under Kakashi Harake, viewed as the most strict Jonin to ever not have a team, or more like to have many teams which scrubbed out after failing to meet expectations. And now Naruto was required to meet those very same expectations. But the concept of the expectations were, in reality, very easy if you knew what you were looking for. Much like Kakashi, these expectations were easy going and very emotionally based if you could manage to break through the mysterious 
barrier. And that expectation was not skill-based, it was based on teamwork, something that Team 7 lacked at first. But upon the three discovering the meaning of teamwork, going so far as to disobey their mentor to work as a team, Kakashi would be touched, passing them and proving the kind of teacher he was, revealing that the students he sent away were worthy of dismissal on the grounds that they could not understand the most important part about being on a team. Once Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke were all on that team, they'd begin their brutally underwhelming start. Everyone starts from the bottom, but sometimes the bottom is just so boring. Honestly though, if I were a shinobi, walking dogs, rescuing cats, and doing basic work as opposed to fighting a war would be preferable. I would be the next eternal genin. Anyway, a mission to the land of waves opens up. Naruto jumps at it because his idea of being a ninja is a more conventional variant, actually doing ninja stuff. So they go on their way to the land of waves to safeguard their charge to Zuna on his way back and further protect him and his workers as they build the bridge. This is easier said than done, as instead of meeting bandits, they're caught against elite assassins, such as the Demon Brothers and the likes of Haku and Zabuza. But by the skin of their teeth and the resourcefulness of Naruto and Sasuke, they make it through. However, and important to note here, is that Naruto is not resistant to poisoning. That was an ability of the Nine Tails, but Naruto no longer possesses that. Instead, he has wood release, which would in fact heal him as his body is essentially made up of Hashirama Senju cells, despite them not being from Hashirama Senju. This means that his healing factor is pretty legendary, meaning he can come back from some very rough gore without dying. Still, Kakashi would have to neutralize the poison as opposed to just watching it go away on its own. This would likely result in him cutting open the wound with a knife and attempting to suck the majority of the poison out before wrapping him up and providing him with an anti-venom to cure whatever poison would have entered his body. And as for Zabuza, well, Naruto and Sasuke are resourceful. They could still defeat them. After all, this Naruto lacks nothing that the other had in terms of this moment. He could easily have the same plan with the same outcome. In fact, the only real change in the story comes when they're on the bridge caught in the demonic mirroring ice crystal. Sasuke takes a shot for Naruto and goes down. Naruto doesn't have the nine tails, so what happens? Well, I am a big believer in rage amps. A lot of anime characters receive rage amps. In Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, it seems the angrier a Jojo gets, the stronger they are. This is shown all through part three, and is portrayed by dark determination in all other Jojos. Dragon Ball takes rage amps and turns them into a whole transformation, like Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan 2. So I do think that Naruto would get a rage amp as a stat increase to his abilities, but it's not going to be anywhere near as potent as it was when he had Kurama. This means he's not just going to put off energy and melt mirrors. No, but what it does mean is that he's going to limit break his way into stronger, more impressive techniques, and what I see him doing is forming a large tree around himself and Sasuke, whose branches spread out and the roots attempt to shatter each mirror. Of course, this is something that must happen simultaneously, as if it doesn't, Haku will just correct the technique. But given how many branches and roots Naruto has, he could easily shatter them all at once before summoning the roots to capture Haku. In the end, this would likely end the same, as Haku isn't going to remain caught in a wooden tree limb for long, and would sacrifice himself to save Zabuza. After this, Zabuza's rampage over Haku would eliminate Gato and his gang, freeing the village. This would result in the death of Zabuza as well. The team would eventually return to the village, and the news of their work would reach the ears of the Hokage. Naruto's use of the wood release ability was something unseen since Hashirama, only recently used by Yamato through experimentation. Due to this and the similarities between Naruto and Hashirama, as well as the skill he displayed, Naruto and Team 7 would be recommended for Chunin level, to which Team 7 would gladly accept. Joining in with the rest of the Rookie 9, they would begin the tests, the first of which is a written one. Of course, this isn't as hard for Naruto as it would be in the main timeline. Why, may you ask? Because unlike before, Naruto has a way of properly cheating, something he didn't before. And before you mention Hinata as a viable way, Naruto didn't want to risk her failing for him, so he refused to use it. The way I'm thinking is a bit more secretive. We know that Naruto is a wood release user, so what kind of trick could he pull off with that? Well, tables are wood. So are pencils. The paper itself is technically a form of wood. All Naruto needs to do is utilize wood release to connect him to these items to get a good guess at what's going on. With it, he can easily guess the correct answers through cheating. And when the final answer to the test comes up, Naruto is so confident due to his cheating that he would take it as well, thereby passing the test with pure gutsiness. The second test is the Forest of Death. This would also be a lot easier for him as Naruto would be in his element. A forest can only be a forest if there are trees, right? Elsewise, it's just a prairie. And guess what trees are made of? 
wood. Naruto, with a simple touch of his hand, would be able to connect with a tree and thereby the whole forest due to the intermingling of roots that tangle into an intricate knot below the surface. Through wood release and the various trees within, Naruto has become omniscient within this forest, informed of the location of every person and thing within it. With this ability, Naruto can optimize his team's chances of success by letting them know when and where everything will occur, both for and against them. If someone's coming for them, he can tell them. When they're going for someone else, he'll know that too. This means that he has some forewarning when Orochimaru shows up. He knows how to detect it, so he would inform everyone when it's coming and thus avoid getting eaten by a snake. He is there when the disguised Orochimaru comes for them. When everyone else is frozen stiff, Naruto manages to help defend them using the entire forest as an extension of his very being. This allows him to properly defend the others from Orochimaru. This also ensures that Sasuke doesn't get branded by Orochimaru. The old snake doesn't give up though, and Naruto would rush through the trees with his team, dead set on escaping with their scroll. They may be incapable of winning against him, but that doesn't mean they have to lose either. Escaping is a victory in and of itself, and it allows them to not only put distance between themselves and Orochimaru, but also to find an enemy scroll and make it to the center of the forest, beating out even Gara and the Sand siblings, shattering the old record. They would move on to the final portion of the exams, the preliminaries. Here, things go far better than before. Of course, the results of the battles are the same, but both Naruto and Sasuke have an easier time, especially since Naruto has wood release and Sasuke was never branded. During their month off, though, as they train, Sasuke is approached by Orochimaru, who no longer acts hostile, preferring to wear his original face, offering to speak with Sasuke. Sasuke would ask what he wants, and Orochimaru would state that he would offer him power in exchange for loyalty. Sasuke is skeptical at first, but Orochimaru would mention Itachi and how strong he is and how Orochimaru can help Sasuke get to that level easily. So taking a chance, he allows Orochimaru to help him. This results in Sasuke gaining use of the first stage of the Cursed Seal of Heaven, which he's impressed by. After about a month of testing out the first stage, he decides to take Orochimaru up on his offer, awakening the second stage of the mark, which impresses him so greatly that he agrees to serve Orochimaru then and there. Naruto would face off against Neji Hyuga, and due to having wood release, would be able to make distance between himself and Neji, which would help Naruto avoid the gentle fist style. He would then manage to defeat him after finding his weak point. However, when the next round of the exhibitions come up, things go a little differently. Technically, Sasuke and Gara are on the same side now, and they know it too. Sasuke and Gara would fight for a while, offering token resistance to each other enough to make it look convincing all while saving their strength, something that Naruto can tell as he watches. Sakura watches it too and notes that Sasuke is not using his full potential, not even half of it. But when an explosion goes off in the Kage's box, Gara takes that as a sign that it's time to get to work, and would transform into Shukaku right there and then. Of course, various other shinobi would attempt to stop him, but they're quickly dispatched by the tailed beast's massive claws and tail, and those that get through are easily picked off by Sasuke and the sand siblings who are aiding Gara in the fight. While this is happening, the village is under assault by Orochimaru's snakes, with Orochimaru himself and the Sound Four facing off against the Hokage. In the end, Orochimaru kills the third, but his arms are sealed away as one last up yours from Hiruzen. After this, it becomes apparent that the battle is turning against them and they flee the village. Gara and the Sand siblings flee to Sunagakure, and Orochimaru, the Sound Four, and Sasuke all flee to Otogakure. Naruto and Sakura are stunned and unable to understand how Sasuke could do such a thing. Naruto is beyond words. How could the same Sasuke that threw himself in the way of a Senban for him betray him like this? The village was in disarray. The Hokage was dead and many people were hurt. The village council took control of the village, and after the burial of the third, they would commission Jiraiya to go after Tsunade to become the fourth Hokage. It's during this time that the Nine Tails regenerates, and Orochimaru decides to put importance into getting a hold of that. After all, he has Sasuke, and he has his living corpse reincarnation jutsu. He transfers to a temporary body for the time being and helps Sasuke grow stronger, attempting to use him to get the Nine Tails for use against Konoha. Sasuke has other plans with it though. Naruto is away with Jiraiya, trying to convince Tsunade to return. She does not wish to, however, only after a long explanation by a desperate Naruto about how badly they need her, in his anger he makes use of his wood-style nature transformation, which catches her eye. She asks how he can make use of such a technique, and he says he's always been able to. Tsunade knows how rare this jutsu is, and that it's never been used naturally by anyone else but her grandfather. She looks to Jiraiya and realizes from him that this is the son of Minato Namakaze and Kushina Uzumaki. There was no direct relation to Hashirama. She began to wonder if perhaps he could be her grandfather's reincarnation 
incarnate. Her interest piqued by this new development, she decides to come to the village to become Hokage. While there, she begins to look through any files on Naruto, his parents, Root, the Anbu, anything she could find on Naruto or Wood Style. Coming to the realization that he is merely a normal, natural kid with the power of Wood Release, she begins to suspect a deep connection to her grandfather, something even she could not achieve as a direct descendant. After all, neither Hashirama's descendants nor ancestors could achieve this technique. Was it possible that he could be Hashirama? As time went on, she interviewed the boy and heard of his loyalty to the village, his love of his people, and his desire to be the Hokage, specifically for the people. She witnesses within him the burning flames of the Will of Fire, and every moment she spends with him, she sees more and more of Hashirama in him. The dopey nature, the serious attitude towards things of importance, and even a similar laugh. He had vices, and while he did not drink, he wasn't opposed to gambling. He did possess the sexy jutsu, which did remind her of Hashirama, as her grandmother claimed that he was a little perverted in his younger years. It's then that Tsunade begins to see it coming. This boy will eventually become Hokage, and she will make sure it happens. But to that end, she believes that he should train to grow stronger, something that he plans to do as well, in an effort to retrieve his friend, Sasuke. She tells Jiraiya that she wants him to oversee his growth, and then says that she plans to show him the way her grandfather once walked, an unexplored area where a great power can be found. She would summon a slug to her, a part of Katsu. She tells Naruto what he must do. She says that if he goes to Shikotsu Forest, there he will find the Slug Sage. She says she traveled there once, which is where she found Katsuyu, and she states that she considered learning Senjutsu, but it never really appealed to her, as it would have given her slug-like features, which she wanted nothing to do with. But she states that with proper training, Naruto might just achieve it. So she gives him a piece of Katsuyu to lead the way, and sees him to the gate of the village. Before she leaves, she decides to give him the first Hokage's necklace, and ruffles his hair, wishing him good luck. Jiraiya is a little upset that they're not going to Mount Myoboku to learn from the toads, but Tsunade is adamant that he will learn the same way her grandfather did, in hopes that Naruto will become as great as Hashirama. As they leave, they follow the directions of Katsuyu. Eventually, they're led to a thick forest of massive trees, so large that Naruto would gawk, having never seen a tree so tall and wide before. A heavy mist lays over the forest, which makes it hard to see, but Katsuyu seems to love it. It's damp and cool, something Katsuyu states that she misses. They cross a wide river. Everything in this forest seems so large, and by comparison, Naruto and Jiraiya feel like bugs compared to everything. Eventually, they're led to a large stone, and beneath that stone is a hole in the ground. Traveling in, under Katsuyu's orders, they would see many slugs, some of which are enjoying large leaves and sap, but then they reach the biggest slug of them all, wearing a pair of glasses and drinking a beer. Yes, drinking a beer. The slug sage sees Jiraiya and immediately identifies him as a Toad Sage Mode user and demands that he leave. Katsuyu vouches for him though, and the sage relents on the condition that Jiraiya not summon any toads. Katsuyu asks the slug sage if they'll teach Naruto the art of sage mode. After looking at Naruto, the slug sage states that Naruto may be the reincarnation of Hashirama Senju, something Katsuyu states that Tsunade believed he was as well. Due to this, the slug sage decides he will teach Naruto, and so Naruto is taken outside by the river with various other slugs. They tell him to stripped down much to his horror, but they claim to be serious about this, so he begrudgingly does as they say. Once he's ready, he asks what comes next. The sage sitting above him then spits on him, drenching him in saliva. Naruto is both annoyed and disgusted and considers just jumping in the river, but the sage tells him not to. Instead, he just sits there as other, smaller slugs begin to crawl all over him. Jiraiya is trying not to laugh, but he begins to peg it though. He asks the sage if these slugs are helping him absorb sage energy, and he states that they are. He says that they're secreting a slime that naturally takes in natural energy. Jiraiya nods and mentions that the toads use a similar technique. The slug sage states that it goes further, as when the slugs detect him gathering too much, they will help him regulate, keeping him from dying from the use of it. Jiraiya nods in understanding, but then asks what the spit was for. The sage states that it was to coat him in beer, as slugs like the sweet smell of yeast, much like they love sap, and that the spit is more of a treat for the slugs as opposed to anything for Naruto. Jiraiya asks why the sage didn't just pour beer on him, and the sage states that he didn't want to waste any beer. So, for quite a while, with the help of the slugs and the coaching of Jiraiya, Naruto slowly begins to absorb natural energy, learning his limits and how to regulate it properly. Naruto spends quite some time training here with the slugs and Jiraiya. Meanwhile, Orochimaru, Kabuto, the Sound Four, and Sasuke are all surrounding the Ninetales. Despite their stealthy nature, the moment they get within three miles of Karama, it almost seems to smell them, turning in their direction with a sneer and a growl. Orochimaru tells Sasuke that their training is going to pay off, telling Sasuke that he must capture 
Kurama using his Sharingan. He needs to get close enough to make eye contact. If Sasuke gets Kurama, Itachi will come soon enough. And so, they begin the process of attempting to capture the tailed beast. They ran closer, dodging as many attacks as would come. The Nine Tails shots at this distance were slower, meaning they could get closer. Using trees for cover, each made it as close as they could. They split up, all seven going in a different direction. This was to ensure that they could get close enough. Of course, Orochimaru went with Team B, leaving Team A under the control of Sasuke and Kabuto. This was so Orochimaru could utilize Manda and gain the attention of Kurama long enough for Sasuke to get close. And as Manda and Orochimaru battled for supremacy, Sasuke ran up the spine of the Ninetales, jumping over his head and landing on his snout. Activating his second stage to increase his speed and power, he landed in front of the Ninetales and looked directly into its eyes. He cast it under Genjutsu, calming it just long enough for Orochimaru to seal the fox away into a scroll. With their mission complete, they returned to Oto. However, as the years passed, the things that Orochimaru did and taught Sasuke began to waver. Sasuke's growth began to stunt as he was now going beyond Orochimaru's capabilities. And to that end, Sasuke knew that now was the time. He fought his way through the Sound 4 to Orochimaru where he engaged him in a very short-lived combat, where Sasuke came out on top. Sasuke took the Nine Tails from Orochimaru's scroll and sealed it into himself. With that inside of him, he utilized his Sharingan to keep Kurama under control and use what he had to grow stronger. Sasuke felt that his power had increased without comparison and was certain that even Itachi couldn't handle him now, and so he set off to find him. Elsewhere, after years of training with the Sages and Jiraiya and growing stronger in general, Naruto returned home triumphantly, utilizing the same Sage mode that Hashirama had so many years prior. At that time, Gara had been kidnapped, but Konoha would not get involved. After all, there were strained relations with Suna after the incident with the Chunin exams, which left the Hokage dead. Gara was still unstable and would not have become Hokage, meaning someone else would have. It would have been kept an internal affair even if the tailed beast was stolen. Due to this, Konoha never hears about the threat of the Akatsuki. All the while, Sasuke locates Itachi and proceeds to fight him. Even though Sasuke did not awaken Mangekyo by this time, the power of the Ninetales allowed him to overshadow Itachi's power, which in the end allows him to win. It's then that Tobi, under the guise of Madara Uchiha, would tell Sasuke the truth about Konoha and Itachi's hand in the slaughter. Obito tells him this specifically to rile him up against Konoha. The reason is, he hopes Sasuke will devastate the village as well as all other villages and hopes that it will make it easier to acquire all of the tailed beasts. And to that end, he elects to allow Sasuke to maintain the ten tails for a time. His words have the intended effect on Sasuke, who decides that he will eradicate the village for what it did to Itachi. Sasuke takes Kurama and begins his march on Konoha. When he arrives, he would summon the tailed beast and proceed to lay waste to the village, but Naruto shows up utilizing sage mode to stop him. To face off against Kurama, he uses his sage art wood release, true several thousand hands, and an effort to fight Kurama. Even Sasuke is surprised by the size and power of this statue, but is undaunted, deciding to utilize his Susano to cover Kurama in majestic armor, before utilizing a tailed beast bomb to destroy the statue. However, the statue and its many hands reach out to grab Kurama. Naruto rushes down and begs Sasuke to stop, but Sasuke refuses in the two fight. Sasuke utilizes his second stage curse mark, while Naruto utilizes slug sage mode. As they fight, he keeps asking Sasuke to stop, but it becomes apparent that he won't. Generally, Naruto would never consider consider killing Sasuke, but considering that he's bringing the Ninetales into this and so desperately is refusing to stop, Naruto considers the possibility that there is no way to save both the village and Sasuke at the same time. So the two battle for what seems like hours, from dusk till dawn, and eventually Naruto notices Sasuke is growing tired his eyes growing dim from overuse of the Sharingan, and he takes his chance. Suddenly, Sasuke opens his eyes and casts a Matarasu on Naruto, but this Naruto is revealed to be a wood clone. Suddenly, Naruto appears behind Sasuke and stabs him through the back. Sasuke falls to one knee before falling on his face. Naruto kneels there, holding Sasuke and crying. Damn it, you fool. Why'd you make me do this? Sasuke doesn't respond. Instead, as a last-ditch effort to destroy the village, he releases Kurama entirely to run him up. Naruto lays his friend down gently and then utilizes his wood human technique to get close enough to the creature. His necklace glows as Naruto reaches out to touch Kurama, the point of his hand reading sit. He utilized the Hokage-style 60-year-old technique entering society with bliss-bringing hands to pacify the Ninetales. He proceeds to seal it within himself as a member of the Uzumaki, famed for their sealing jutsu. But this does not bode well for Naruto as the Akatsuki are upset from having lost 
lost their tailed beast, and Pain comes back personally to take it. However, due to Naruto's training and abilities, he manages to defeat Pain. But this is not the end of their troubles, as Kabuto teams up with the Akatsuki and proceeds to provide Obito with the Ido Tensei he requires for war. And because of this technique, they're able to revive the Gold and Silver Brothers, making it so that they don't need to use it, allowing him to activate the Ten Tails short one complete tailed beast. Naruto and the Shinobi of the Leaf engage Obito in combat, but find themselves too weak. However, Naruto, after having received Chakra from the Sage of Six Paths, manages to not only defeat Obito, but to pull the Ten Tails from him. Before they can end the threat, though, a newly revived Madara takes the Ten Tails and readies to cast the Infinite Tsukiyomi, but his whole being is hijacked by Kaguya, who plans to make use of the Infinite Tsukiyomi to reclaim all of her Chakra. Naruto would manage to protect himself, Sakura, Kakashi, and a reformed Obito from the Genjutsu using his truth-seeking orbs, but the battle is far from over. They traveled through her dimensions where they managed to get just close enough to seal her away. Peace is eventually restored and Naruto would become Hokage. Of course, without Sasuke, the Kage might not be able to find Naruto when Momoshiki attacks, which could result in a very bad ending, but I'm electing to ignore that for now and end on a high note. I would love to hear what you think about this what if. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.